apps are listed for pioneers to access. Tap wallet.py and then generate wallet. And remember not to press the back button until you finished this process. Now that your wallet and wallet passphrase have been generated, note this extremely important detail. Your passphrase is used to unlock your wallet. Due to the non-custodial nature of the wallet, Pi Network does not keep a record of your wallet passphrase in its servers. So losing your passphrase is akin to losing your entire wallet along with all the assets inside. For ease of use, you have the option to use biometric features such as a face ID or fingerprint, depending on your phone type, to unlock your wallet. However, please do not view this as a substitute for securing your passphrase. The biometric feature will not transfer over to a new device, which can lead to your wallet loss, particularly when you lose your phone, if you do not have a record of your passphrase. So again, do not lose or forget your passphrase. And do not share it with anyone else because they will then be able to access your wallet and transfer all your Pi out of your possession. On the next page, you'll see your wallet address and a privacy setting for you to confirm. Your wallet address is your public identity on the Pi blockchain that, unlike the passphrase, other pioneers or Pi apps can see and use when you send Pi to them, spend Pi in their apps, or receive Pi from them. We recommend that you set this privacy preference to searchable by username. This will be a convenience feature implemented in the future that will let others search for your Pi username directly instead of the long wallet address in order to send you Pi. After completing these steps, you've now successfully created your Pi wallet. Now we'll walk you through the wallet interface and how it functions. Let's start back at the Pi browser directory screen. Tap Pi wallet again to see your successfully created Pi wallet, log into your wallet through your wallet passphrase or biometric authentication, and you'll see the new wallet interface here. If you tap here, you'll be taken to a page where you can see the status of your biometric authentication and the passphrase of your wallet. Next, we'll show you how to receive and send Pi payments through your wallet. To receive Pi, tap here, where you'll be able to copy and share your public Pi wallet address with others. Again, while you can share your public Pi wallet address, please keep in mind to never share your wallet passphrase. Note that, like on any other blockchain, all transactions are publicly visible on the Pi blockchain. To send Pi, tap here. On this page, to send another Pioneer your Pi, you can input their wallet address here, and then the amount of Pi you want to send here. It's that simple. Please make sure that you have the correct wallet address of the recipient Pioneer. Otherwise, the Pi you send will accidentally go to the wrong person. The minimum initial transaction fee will be 0.01 Pi per transaction. Users can increase the fee they pay if the blockchain is congested so their transaction is prioritized. Finally, to test out Pi transactions without using your real Pi, you can tap here to access your testnet wallet. This testnet wallet can only be used with test Pi, which has absolutely no value and only exists for testing purposes. It's frequently used by Pi app developers while testing various features of their app. Have fun! That's all for today, Pioneers. Thanks for watching, and we're so excited to see the Pi mainnet wallet's functionality in practice. Create your wallet get KYC verified, migrate your Pi transferable balance to mainnet, and then we'll see you on the other side, the Pi apps ecosystem.